What is up, everybody? Welcome back once again to Hot Toys Hotline. As always, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. We currently have about 1,080 subscribers, and I have a current goal of 1,250 subscribers. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like on this video. I would very much appreciate it. As you can see, rotating in front of me, guys, I have the Season 7 Sandor Clegane, a.k.a. The Hound, by 3-0. I'm really excited to take a look at this. I do not have a Hound currently in my collection. This is the newest version that just released, and I'm very excited to show it to you all. So let's take them out of the box and take a closer look at how all the accessories are laid out in the packaging, and then we'll take a closer look at all of the details. All right, everyone, and before we get started, as always, I like to take all of the clamshells out of the box and kind of show you how everything arrives when it is shipped to you. That way, let's say you buy this figure on the secondary market or yours arrives a bit disheveled, you can view my video and take a look at how everything is laid out. Of course, as always, I do take the plastic off of all of the accessories, uh, especially this cloak here on the right that did arrive with plastic fully around it. And of course, the limbs and everything and the head sculpt on the figure did as well. I just like to remove that for your viewing pleasure and kind of get that out of the way. That way you can see everything very clearly. So I just wanted to let you know that. And of course, I wanted to show this to you guys as always. But let's take all of the accessories and the figure out of the box. And we're going to take a closer look at all of the details. All right, so as you can see, I have all of the accessories removed from the packaging laid out in front of us. As you can see, for a price tag of $199, I think this is a decent amount of stuff that comes with Sandor Clegane. So we're going to get right into it, guys. First, let's get these out of the way. You do have some spare hand pegs here. Many companies like Hot Toys, 3-0, what have you. It's very nice that they include these. These break very often, so always nice to have these. They actually do come in the packaging uh, kind of laid out like this without any plastic over them. So I thought that was very interesting, but nonetheless, very cool they included them as always. And then next, guys, we're going to grab some of the hands here. So as you can see, the paint apps are decent. Are they great? Uh, I wouldn't say that they are. There is a bit of depth to it. You can see there's some speckling on the skin and such. But I don't think this is the best paintwork I've ever seen from 3-0 personally. Uh, this, as you can see, is a clenched fist. And you can see some weathering detail on the palm there. But very basic paintwork in my opinion. Not bad, but not fantastic in my opinion. But overall, I think some clenched fist hands are very fitting for the Hound. Next, guys, I will grab the other pair of hands that he includes that are not pre-installed on the figure. You could see similar paint details to the other hands. Again, good, but not great. I think they could use a bit more depth to them. However, uh, I do think the sculpt is good. I don't know if I mentioned that on previous hands, but the sculpt is good. I do like the vein work and such on the hands. I think that looks pretty solid. And these hands are both, of course, our weapon holding hands. You could see there's an opening for the weapon. Of course, I show you from the top as well. You could see uh, right through there. And and these are the hands that you would use to put the weapons in his hands. Now, guys, of course, as always, you could see four extra hands, two pairs of hands, and then one pair of hands installed on the figure. I always say I would like to see a little bit more in terms of the included hands. And I'm going to stick to that on this one. Come on, 3-0. Give us some more hands. You gave us a great price. I will say that for $199 for an officially licensed figure, I think that's a very fair price. And he does come with a decent amount of stuff. If you could squeeze in a couple more hands here or there, I would definitely very much appreciate that. Moving on, guys. Next, I think we're going to grab this cloak here just to kind of get it out of the way. You could see really nice faux fur detail here. I think that looks absolutely beautiful. I have zero complaints about that. And I will say this is a really nice feeling material that they made this out of. Um, I want to take a look at how this attaches on the inside. So it does look like there's a string here that you tie around his neck, which is simple enough. And you can see some nice lined uh, brown cloth on the inside there. And it does open up to be quite a bit. But of course, it's really closer to his body when you see him wearing this in Season 7. Um, but really, really nice work from 3-0 on this one, in my opinion. And again, I really love this faux fur. It's very soft and very realistic looking in person. I would say this actually also rivals if you have the armor from the Hot Toys Star Wars Mandalorian line. I would say this fur definitely rivals what they used on here. This looks much more realistic in person, whereas that one, it's kind of a bit rough. It's not on the softer side like this is. So this is fantastic in my opinion. Next, we might as well grab the hood that goes along with that cloak. And you can see this is just kind of a sewn fabric hood here. It kind of slips over his head there. I don't feel any wiring or anything in here. It is very floppy, however. I think I'll put this on the figure and kind of have the hood pulled down because I like that look. So it made sense to show to you all after we took a look at the cloak. 
Next, my personal favorite accessory, that is the dragon glass battle axe that he has. Uh, I think this looks absolutely fantastic. I do have the Jon Snow from this 3-0 Game of Thrones line, and he has that dragon glass dagger, and I absolutely adore that. So it's cool to see another character including that. This is really, really cool. You could see I have stronger lighting aiming down on these accessories just to take a look at all the details. You could see it absolutely glistens in the light. All the sculpted in little crevices and everything. You could see there's bits of snow and weathering on it. I think this looks absolutely fantastic. Moving down the shaft of the weapon, you could see bits of snow on the shaft as well. Really good attention to detail because obviously uh, they go beyond the wall to look for that white to bring back as proof that winter is coming. So this is absolutely awesome. I'm glad they included this. Next, guys, let's grab this smaller dagger and the sheath that it includes. You could see... I think 3-0 does a great job, and I often say this about Sideshow stuff, to where the older stuff definitely didn't look like real metal. And I think 3-0 does a good job with their paintwork. This definitely looks like real metal to me. It's a nice chrome paint job. And you can see some really nice weathering detail here on the handle as well. And I think this is a really cool looking dagger. And of course, going along with that, you do have a sheath as well with some kind of uh, sculpted in wrinkles, if you will. And I think it looks really good. There's some nice close-up detail. It looks like real leather or hide, whatever this would have been made out of, and I think this looks really good. And you can see some nice sculpted in detail towards the bottom there. Of course, guys, if I could do this on camera, you can, of course, sheath it. Um, is it loose? Uh, yeah, it is loose. It doesn't fit tight. I would like it to be a bit more snug. I imagine when I tip it over, it will just fall out. Yes, it does. So definitely really cool. I would like a bit better fitment, though, on that sheath and the dagger. That's just my personal opinion, though. And finally, guys... We're going to grab the sword and the sheath. But here we have the long sword and the sheath. And as you can see, if we get close up on the sheath here, you do have the same kind of wrinkled detail. You have some uh, simulated snow here down on the bottom. Really, really nicely done. I like all the wrinkles and cuts and everything that they sculpted into this piece. It does look like it's made of, again, real hide or leather, whatever these are made out of in the show. And then getting close up on the longsword, I love this hilt here. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. And you can see some really nice like weather detail on that brass to almost make it look a bit tarnished. And same here going towards the top of the handle. And there's also a bit of like weathering detail going down the main blade of the sword. And again, I love that they use a good silver on this to make it look like real metal. But believe it or not, guys, that is it for all of the accessories. No display stand with this one being that it is 3-0 and they often don't include those. Let me grab the hound and we'll take a closer look at the figure. All right, everyone, here we are with Sandor Clegane, a.k.a. the Hound, from Season 7 of the Game of Thrones. Now, right off the bat, before we get into the head sculpt and the rest of the details on the figure, I did want to mention this figure has a very bad plasticky odor coming from him. It's almost like I, I have to leave him out and let him degas. This is brand new out of the packaging, uh, and it smells really, really bad. Out of all the figures I've purchased over the years, this is easily the worst smelling figure, and it's definitely coming from this tunic here. So I wanted to point that out in case you guys end up picking this figure up. Uh, if yours smells like that, don't worry, you're not alone because mine smells horrible. Uh, but let's get into the figure, guys. I want to take a look at this head sculpt with y'all. I honestly think this is absolutely fantastic, and I would venture to say this is actually one of the best figures in the line in terms of the likeness on the sculpt. So Bravo to 3-0 on that. You can see he does have the rooted hair. You guys know my thoughts on rooted hair. There's some stray hairs here and there, as you could see. Um, I have not fussed with the hair at all. I have not added any water or product or anything like that. This is exactly how he came out of the box. It's kind of fitting for the hound for his hair to be a little bit messy. So I don't hate the rooted hair on this one personally. Um, but I'll definitely uh, mess with it a little bit later uh, once I'm done this review. What I want to do really quick is adjust the lighting as well for you guys. Kind of adjust the lighting temperature so you could see how he looks. I'm going to turn it up a bit brighter. As you can see, that's kind of a bright white light. And then adjusting it down, you can see as the light gets yellower, you could see that's what he looks like in different lighting. Because I know that plays a big factor, and we talk about this often on the live streams. So I just wanted to share that with you all in case you have different temperatures of lighting in your display. This is what you could expect the head sculpt to look like. Also with the head sculpt, guys, I do want to kind of move the hair out of the way so you guys can see what's underneath. You could see that great kind of burn detail. As you may know if you've seen the show, that is kind of the Hound's bane of his existence, his memories of getting burnt as a child. You could see really nice sculpted in detail there, and really nice paintwork in my opinion. There's kind of like a hybrid rooted and sculpted sculpt here. You could see the rooted hair that I'm pulling back and the sculpted hair revealed underneath, and that is the same on both sides. So you could see that's kind of how this is put together. And you can see that attachment point down the bottom there uh, for the back of the head. 
But I just wanted to show that to you all because I thought it was very interesting how it was all put together. So guys, moving down, you could see really nice detail, as smelly as it is, really, really nice detail here on the tunic. You could see it has all these diamonds making up the entire pattern. I think when they applied those during that process uh, is why this is so smelly. Uh, it does look really, really good. Again, it just smells really bad. Moving down to the lower portion, I love that kind of snow detail that they included throughout all of the accessories in the figure. It's very fitting because obviously, again, they make their trek beyond the wall so they can find a white to bring back to King's Landing to prove that winter is coming because they knew that that was the only way. Uh, wrapping around to the back, you could see same great detail. And I love this actual stitching here that runs down the back and you can see these strings run down towards the bottom. Very, very cool and really nice attention to detail in my personal opinion. And you could also see this kind of like faux chain mail here. This is not real metal or mesh metal. This is a cloth material, but I just wanted to point that out. I think that looks really good as like a faux chain mail. Very nice looking indeed. And you can see it's kind of damaged and worn towards the bottom, which I think is a really nice touch. And then you do have his belt and I'll wrap around back to the front so you can see the belt in full. We'll get it a little bit closer. The belt is a sculpted plastic, which is a good thing. This is not a pleather like many belts are on a lot of modern six scale figures. So it's really good to see. You could see you could slot the sheath in here on the side, which is really, really cool. And there's another spot to do that as well on this side for the longer sword. Really, really nicely done. And again, some really nice sculpted in detail on that belt. Moving back around to the front though, guys. Moving down, you can see there's a lot of layers to this figure. You have this upper smelly layer, as I talked about, and there's multiple layers there. Then you have another thicker cloth material underneath as well. Moving down to the pants as well, you have some fabric pants, a lot of layers. This is a nice like woven cloth material that's sewed up very nicely in that diamond shape pattern. Really, really nicely done there. Very clean stitching in my opinion. And again, you do have this faux hide feeling pair of pants. I think this feels really nice. It's a really nice material. For those that have the Nightmare Batman from Hot Toys, it's kind of what this material feels like. And again, of course, it goes around to the other side. Uh, but the pants look really, really nice, really nicely tailored. Moving down, guys, to the boots. Hallelujah, we do have some split cut boots. So that's going to make posability a lot better, in my opinion. And I can't wait to check that out. You can see you have some awesome snow detail on those as well. I love that they kind of included that throughout the figure and all of the accessories because it just adds to the realism. Moving down to the tread, you do have the 3-0 logo on one foot and the HBO licensing on the other. Of course, they have to include that because it's part of their licensing agreement. So I just wanted to show that to you all. And then moving around to the back, you do see some nice sculpting work on the creases on those boots. I think it looks pretty good in my opinion. I think they may have been able to do a little bit better job on the faux stitching here because that looks kind of fake. But apart from that, I think they're nicely sculpted. Um, but let me adjust the camera a little bit, guys, and we're going to take a look at how well this figure can articulate. I will be right back. All right, guys, we're going to get into the articulation now on the figure, starting with the head sculpt, rotating right and left, absolutely no issues, forward and backward, absolutely free. Backward, it gets a little bit restrictive, but you really wouldn't want to put his head back much more than that, I would imagine, so definitely some really good movement there. In terms of the shoulder joints, guys, and I will say be very careful with this, and I'll show you why after I put both of these up. You can see there's a split design here. You can see that cloth undersuit underneath, and that is by design. I did not rip that or anything. This is how it showed up to me. But be very careful because I can see you splitting these stitches if you go too crazy with the posing on the shoulders. I'm going to go ahead and put those down on my figure, but you can push yours really as far as you want it. Just be very careful. In terms of the elbow joint, you do have a really nice double jointed elbow here. And of course, that is the same on the other side. These are not ratcheted, so be very careful keeping them in a tight pose over time because they may loosen up. And I wanted to point out when you pose it that drastically, you could see some wrinkling in the material already. It remains to be seen to me whether this will heal up over time. I imagine it will, but I just wanted to point that out because I feel like if you keep it in an extreme pose too long, you may permanently indent these little diamonds here, so definitely keep that in mind. Guys, I didn't show this in the first figure segment, but he does come with open, relaxed hands pre-installed on the figure. Of course, you can rotate kind of fully 360, and you could also, of course, swivel the hand in the direction that the joint's facing, and it's going to be the same on both sides. In terms of ab crunch, guys, uh, you could definitely crunch forward an okay amount. Just again, be careful with this kind of diamond design on here. I could see that kind of wrinkling and staying that way over time. There's not only a fat suit in here, but there also are quite a few layers on this figure with all the different shirts and chain mail that he has. So that's going to be restricting the hip movement a little bit. 
in terms of the leg articulation guys. This is actually ratcheted here and you could actually go very high with that and it holds very well. A very nice ratchet on there. You can see I'm kind of shaking in here and it's not moving. And uh, that's going to be the same on both sides guys. So you can articulate his feet all the way forward. So you can actually get him in a really nice sitting pose. And surprisingly this material all kind of moves with him. Again, just be careful with this material on the top. You don't want to permanently crease it. So don't keep him in any extreme poses over time or that may happen. In terms of the knees, you do have fully ratcheted joints. I'm sure you guys can hear that there. Really, really nice feeling joints and they actually go well beyond 90 if you want them to. Of course, that's gonna be the same on both sides and I'm sure you guys can again hear that. Really, really nice joints. Let me straighten those legs out. Uh, again, I mentioned earlier, you do have a split cut boot here. So really, really good articulation. You can see I could really point those toes if I wanted to. Looks a little goofy, but you can do it. And then rocking left and right is virtually effortless. And of course you can get full rotation all the way around if you really wanted to. So pretty decent articulation on this guy, despite all the different layers that he has. But all right guys, let me throw him into a few poses and then we're gonna close out this video. Let's now get into my final thoughts on Sandor Clegane, aka the Hound, from Season 7 of the Game of Thrones by 3-0. Just to recap some of the negatives, as I mentioned in the video, guys, not a big fan of that smell coming from the figure. Again, it seems to be coming from the main tunic. It definitely is very off-putting and has a really strong plasticky smell. Definitely let me know in the comments down below if you have that same issue with yours. I'm very curious to see if it's a common thing. Again, this is one of the smelliest figures that was brand new in box that I've ever personally experienced. So I definitely wanted to mention that to you all. Another thing, guys, going along with the hands, I want to see a little bit better paint work on the hands. I will say the paint work overall for both the hands and the head sculpt is much better than we see from the Stranger Things line by 3-0. However, I do think they can improve a little bit in that regard. Also, I would like to see more hands included. Six hands is not enough in my opinion, especially when he comes with multiple different weapons. It'd be nice to be able to put them in multiple different poses with additional hands. I think that would help a lot. So definitely would like to see more hands. I'm not laying off of that. I think figures need to come with more hands. Definitely more than just six. But apart from that, guys, I do think you have a lot of value here for $199. Being that this is an officially licensed figure, I think that is a very fair price. He comes with a decent amount of stuff. He has multiple weapons. He has a long sword and a dagger, as you saw, both with an included sheath that go on his belt. I think that is very cool. I will say, I think this is one of their best likenesses when it comes to their Game of Thrones sculpts. I think this looks absolutely fantastic. I think they did a great job with the likeness. In terms of the rooted hair, you guys know I'm not a big fan of rooted hair. However, for this character, being that the Hound has messy hair throughout the entire show, it kind of works, you know, a little bit of water to kind of mat it down a little bit. And I think you're good to go in that regard. Um, the tailoring is really nice as always, especially in these Game of Thrones figures. They kind of have a bit of a complex outfit to them. They have multiple layers. And as I mentioned in the video, everything is really nicely tailored and really nicely layered on the figure. And I think this figure also has a really nice body. Now, I wish it did have ratcheted joints in the elbows. However, the nice ratcheted joints in the knees definitely make up for that. And I will say, being that this is a character with a taller stature, he actually stands just fine, and I think that is due to those ratchets they put in the knees. So I'm definitely a huge fan of that, and of course we'll have to listen to them one more time before we end out this video. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but I hope you can. Absolutely love to hear it. Really nice ratcheted knees on this one. Again, I wish it was throughout the body. However, as long as they do it in the lower portion where I think it matters most, I'm cool with that. The accessories, guys, also, as I said, are really nicely done. I love that kind of snow detail they put throughout the outfit as well as the accessories. I think it's a fantastic touch, and it makes the realism that much more present. I'm a huge fan of this figure, guys. For $199, I really think this is the hound to go with. That fully armored hound that we saw from one of the earlier seasons, that figure is going for like $450 to $600 on eBay. Definitely a much better value at $199, and I will say... 
I do think this sculpt is much better than the one that came with that first figure. So I do think there's some upgraded aspects to this figure as well over that first one. Being that the Hound is one of my favorite characters, I am very happy to own this. I also have the Arya from Season 7 as well as the Jon Snow, so he's going to look right at home next to them. And I think I might have to get the Tormund now because I want to have that whole crew together. I think they would look incredible. So that's definitely what I'm going to go for in my personal collection. Again, I'm very happy with it. I think the price tag makes it that much more easy to justify. And I hope this video helped you make your decision on whether you want to pick this figure up or not. I did purchase my personal copy from Off The Racks. As you may or may not know, I do have a coupon code, code HTH, get you $15 off. So definitely consider picking him up from there at the recording time of this video. He does currently have some in stock. And with that $15 off, it makes it a very, very affordable price and very competitive uh, compared to some other places in the U.S. So I'll definitely drop a link in the description below for that. But that's all I got for you. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There's much more to come, so definitely stay tuned. And once again, subscribe if you haven't already. Get us to that 1250 goal and drop a like on this video if you enjoyed the review. I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a great night.